<laughs> They're okay. Yeah, we need. I'll be to up there by noon tomorrow. Probably like 5 a.m. Yeah, it's it's nice. only four and a half hours. So. Yeah. Where's the rest of them? Where's the other side of town? I don't need anybody else. I got four votes tonight. There you go. They must have forgot. I wonder. It's the left side of town. I know. I'll hold, yeah. it, up. I'll hold it up. You're gonna hold up that end. It comes cheap. Good thing you're holding that end up, <clears throat> Mr. Moheski. You can handle it. I'm sure. Again. All right. Are we ready? ready? Yep. One more month. Uh -huh. For one more month. Can we go ahead and call the meeting to order, please? Council workshop meeting, Monday, March 4th, 2019, 6 p.m. Heidrich? Here. Holtmeyer? Aye. Moheski? Here. Patkey? Here. Pettit? Here. Scornia? Here. Sullentrup? Waterman? Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the committee members answer if they have or have not read the minutes of the meeting dated February 4, 2019? Holtzmeyer? Aye. Moheski? Aye. Patkey? Yes. Pettit? Yes. Scornia? Yes. Having read the minutes, are there any uh, comments or questions? I'll make not. a motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Patkey, seconded by Moheski, to approve the minutes from our last meeting dated February 4, 2019. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? By your vote, you approve the minutes. Thank you. Presentations, refinancing the 2019, 2012 B bonds. Hmm? Hey, Susan. Come on up, Reagan. Security. We'll pull the microphone closer to you there. There you, there you go. go. Mm -hmm. right. Is that good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm Reagan Holiday with Hilltop Securities. Um, I'm here to just briefly kind of give you an overview of the refinancing that we're proposing. Uh, you have roughly uh, $24.2 million of outstanding COPs uh, from 2012 that we have been looking at refinancing for quite some time. As you know, this was presented to you, I think, in December of 2017. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, the market uh, did not cooperate. Uh, essentially, what was going on in 2017 is that there was a lot of tax reform changes being proposed at that time, uh, which created some uncertainty in the market. And it required, basically, it allowed for rates to kind of increase rather quickly. Um, unfortunately, in 2018, the rates did not go back down. It's just been in the last uh, couple months that rates have actually started to go back down. And based on that, we have been monitoring this transaction um, basically the last two years. And we are now in a position uh, where we feel like there is a good opportunity to achieve some savings from refinancing these bonds. Um, so that is the ordinance that I think is going to be presented before you all for passage at your uh, full board meeting. Correct. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions or... Essentially, we're trying to achieve savings. I would say the range right now that we're looking at is roughly 500 to 750, $750,000. Um, the idea is to try to achieve at least 2% uh, savings, net PV savings of the refunded bonds. And that is the benchmark that we've set here in the documents. And it's safe to say that this is the right time? Is, or historically, any information leads towards that? Well, I would say um, if I had a crystal ball, then I would be in a, you know, that would be a great thing. But I will say that the market has definitely shown um, there's a lot of demand for bonds, which is a good thing when you're in the market uh, because there's not a lot of supply of bonds right now. So it is a good time for that, as well as with the interest rates. Uh, they've remained um, steady for, I would say, the last month or so. Um, and that's kind of why we waited to, to kind of approach Darren and Mary, is the idea is we don't want to um, have to pull back again if we don't have to. Right. Um, I will say, the, because you guys got such good rates before, which is good, and because it's only been uh, you know seven years, six years, it's one of those things where we're trying to achieve better rates than the rates you had, and it hasn't been that long. So when you have a situation like that, um, the rates become very becomes very sensitive to the market as to the ability to achieve a refinancing. Similar to your mortgage, like if it had only been a few years since you've 
uh, had your original mortgage, it, it takes a little bit to, to make it worthwhile again to refinance, if that makes sense. Uh, hence, the 2% benchmark is, is what we've set forth in the documents. The idea would be that you would pass the ordinance uh, tonight, and it would authorize the sale to happen um, Right now, we're, the estimation is for next week. Next Thursday would be the time that we're in the market. Um, we anticipate you all getting your rating on this Friday. So once we get the rating, we would then pre-market the bonds and then have the actual sale of the bonds next Thursday, assuming that the market is, is cooperating. Um, if for whatever reason we feel like it's not a good day to be in the market next Thursday, we may pull back um, and try to price it again the following week. We've set the 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 parameters such that we should be able to continue to do that until we, we hit the right time. Because obviously we want to make sure that uh, once we do this that you do achieve good savings. Any other questions? Any questions? Aaron, the, do we set that, I mean that 2% parameter, you'll set that? It's what, in the document. Right. So kind of the way it's set up, and I can kind of just walk you through the, the basic parameters in the ordinance. Um, we have a principal amount that, of the new bond issue to not exceed $26 million. The reason for that is although you are refunding $24.255 million, I think off the top of my head, mm -hmm. we have to have a little bit of a buffer there because you will have some cost of issuance that you're going to pay for, as well as the fact that there are times in the market where you might do a, you might sell some maturities at either a discount, as we call it, or you may sell them um, above par amount. And by doing different types of structures, it can offset what par amount actually needs to happen to get the refunding done. So that's why we have a little bit of wiggle room in there with the par amount. Right now, we're actually looking at it closer to being 23.5 million in par amount. But that is why you have a little bit of a range there. Uh, the second uh, parameter that you've set forth is that the bonds will mature on March 1 of 2030, which is exactly when your 2012 Bs are already maturing. So you are not extending them out. You're keeping the exact same maturity structure. Uh, the third um, parameter that you have set is the underwriter's discount, which is the fee that is paid to my firm, the underwriter. We actually have two underwriters. We are the senior underwriter, Hilltop Securities. Stiefel Nicholas is the co-managing underwriter. Um, so in that range is 0.575%. Um, right now, I think it's actually at 0.55%, um, which roughly ends up at about $5 per thousand of bonds sold. And then you've got a true interest cost, which a true interest cost is your interest cost plus the fee that comes to the underwriters for selling the bonds. That true interest cost will not exceed 3%. So that's, that's a pretty strong parameter, right? So we have to make sure that your true interest cost um, doesn't exceed 3%. And then the other parameter is the one I mentioned to have net PV savings of not less than 2%. Kind of very similar to when you're refinancing a mortgage, you know, you, you typically don't want to do it unless it makes economical sense. This is that same type of benchmark. <coughs> and, and I think the only other real um, detail that's in the ordinance related to the kind of numbers is the fact that you have a date set forth that we have to get the bonds redeemed by. And I think that that is set at May 31 of 2019. And that was the, the most recent change to the ordinance that just came through. We wanted to make sure that we gave ourselves a little bit of buffer there. We have to give the bondholders 30 days notice. And so once this bond issue closes, which we anticipate to be March 26th, It'll be 30 days after that that the, the 2012B bondholders are paid off. So we gave ourselves a little bit of room there in case we need to push the pricing back a little bit because of the market. We would have to push that 30-day notice period out a little bit as well. Okay. But the big news is, is the goal is to save you money. Right. So that's, that's the nice thing. Any other questions or comments? Sounds good. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Report of Department Heads, Finance, Debt Management Policy. Mary? Good evening. I just want to say thank you to Reagan and Chris for being here this evening. Um, and also, I didn't know if they needed to stay for the ordinance. They don't need to if stay for the ordinance. If you guys have any I other mean, questions. It's up to, or up to the council if they feel <clears throat> okay. they're going to have any questions later 
Otherwise, we will let them go ahead and okay. go about their merry way. Um, the item I have on the agenda tonight is the debt management policy. This is something that I've been wanting to do, but just haven't actually formalized it in writing. Um, it is one of the last financial policies um, for the city. The other ones I think we put into place like eight years ago. So um, this debt management policy that you will have um, at next council meeting, it basically establishes a formal policy for the city and it specifically covers like the type of permitted debt, the uses of the debt, the methods of sale, um, how to select service providers, and then your follow-up compliance. So I left it pretty liberal because, so that we could engage in multiple types of debt. So anyway, I didn't know if you had any questions on that tonight. And then the other item um, that I wanted to go over with you, we, um, or I was looking at our folder inserter machine that we use to stuff the utility bills. It is nearly nine years old and it's the maintenance contract is up and we've been having a lot of issues with it. And it went out, let's see, I guess in December for the December billing, it actually broke down on us the day that we <coughs> needed to get utility bills out. So we um, asked the Missourian if they could get the utility billing out for us. And we were looking at, um, I had obtained bids and I was ready to go to council and ask for approval for a new machine. And um, when I did the cost comparison, it actually looks like it's going to be cheaper to outsource that by a pretty significant savings. So um, to purchase the machine equivalent to what we have upstairs over eight years with the annual fees and cost per month was gonna cost approximately 44,000 to go with a machine that's a little bit bigger that would allow us to do a few more inserts, it was gonna cost 64,000. To uh, outsource that to the E-Missourian for three to four inserts over eight years was gonna be 37,000. So it's still cheaper to outsource that and they're going to pick up our inserts, pick up our bills, they'll even take them to the post office for us mm. no and mail what them. The changes are per month? What's that? No matter what the changes are per month, yeah, well, we are three to four inserts is what the they maximum quoted us, but that's all that we could do with ours as well. Yeah. So. That won't change. That it's won't change. And at any point, we can go ahead, you know, if two years down the road, for some reason, this isn't working out, then we can always look at getting a new machine. But honestly, the new machines, they will tell you that they will last longer, but, and I don't know, maybe, you know, other people that are more in the business can, you know, speak to that, but they only last about eight to 10 years. That's all you're gonna get out of them. Do any other departments use the machine? Well, yes. I mean, they give us the inserts and then we actually insert them into the utilities. We'll be doing the inserting for every department we have. But no, that's we don't, what we're doing now. Well, we don't, we don't do it. Every department bill. doesn't do an insert. As a matter of fact, we get well, a- They uh, do want to do one and have to go through her, though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'd have to go through the finance department to go ahead. Which is the way it is now anyway. Right. I mean, there, and the only people we do inserts for are City of Washington, and then we do for downtown Washington and, and the, the chamber. chamber, which are what I, what we consider more our city affiliates, I guess. Right. We don't, you know, other people have asked us to put inserts in and we just have a policy that that's, we're just sticking to those. Sounds like a no brainer to me. Once you get three really four is, years down I mean, the road and you may have more people getting their bills online and we won't have to, mm -hmm. I'd, I would encourage our folks out there to go ahead and sign up for that so that we don't yes. even have to mail that out. That's counterproductive to what we're just talking about getting these other but we have other ways to market our events and stuff that we want to and go your ahead cost of 60 some thousand dollars does that include the labor of the yes employees? I did include well I the cost of the, the outsourcing is thirty seven thousand nine twenty um, our estimated savings in just staff time because normally when we have three to four inserts we have to pre-fold so we're doing twice the amount of work on the machine so instead of 6,500 copies going through there it's really 12,000 each month um, we're saving $13,000 just in staff time over the eight years. So either, even if I don't include the staff time, we're still saving, um, let's see, $6,000, $7,000 over the course of eight years. With the staff time, we're saving $20,000. And, like and that almost pays for the machine, right. the cost of the machine itself, 
the, the one that we have equivalent now is 27000 So the savings almost pays for the machine in eight years. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Is kind of contract you have to sign with Missouri? Well, we asked about that, and they said that they really don't do contracts, and we just basically asked them, you know, if they could let us know, uh, you know, we know this, I think they said of, that those rates would be good for at least Yeah, they'll be good years. for at least a year and that they will let us, they will give us advance notice if for some reason that they can't do it. Because then we would need time to go out and consider purchasing at that point. I mean, the industry raise is usually about 4.5% anyway if you're trying to figure something out for printing. It's usually about 4.5% every year increase, but still nothing. Mm. So well, I just Gary wanted said, to let you know. We get things online. People pay online, get their bills online. Will we send out less bills in the future? Possibly. Yes. If I mean, they sign up for it, cost. they have that option yeah. now. Um, in fact, we're going to look at, we were going to put a flyer in in January or February, but we didn't have the slots available. Um, but we're looking at sending out a reminder of this is how to pay, you know, this is how you sign up to get your utility bill um, electronically. But they can do that now. They just have to sign up but with our utility bill. My point is, is that the, the, the the cost to do it with the Missourian is going to go down as we right. get more online. Correct. If we buy the machine, the cost is there no matter what. Correct. So we could still realize more savings in the future by outsourcing. Correct. I, 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 same thing, though. If you can try a year or two down the road, two years down, you're not happy with it, then you can always buy a machine. Go there. Right. Mm -hmm. Give me a year, mm -hmm. test it out, make sure it works, make a decision again next year. Mary, you mentioned online bill paying. Mm hmm when is it we're going to be able to pay everything on i talked to you the other day about mm -hmm. billing yes um well parks and rec is going live actually this month sometime this month and then they will roll out online payments probably within a month or two after that we got to kind of get the kinks worked out and then um, intergov software which is the building inspection software and engineering department which is the the permits and stuff and business licenses that we're actually um, meeting March next week. Actually, they're gonna be on site to start implementation. So I would say that, and John can quote me if I'm wrong, but I wanna say they said by the end of June is when they estimate we would be using the software. So probably I would say give it a few more months to start the online process. So by the end of this year, I think everything should be available online. That's our goal. I asked because I had a person want to pay us pick up a permit the other day mm -hmm. yes. and couldn't do it because he wanted to pay with a credit card, but he said, no, you got to go get a check. So he had to go back to his office and check. And some things you can pay and some things you can't pay. Right. It depends on what part of the software it's done. out of. But he could have paid with a credit card at the at City no, Hall. No, not he for permits. That. that comes out of version 9 software and we don't. So that's still the 9. Yes. And that's for waiting until in June. So there right. you go. But by the end of this year, that's yeah. our goal is definitely by the end yes. of this year for all payments to be online thanks mm -hmm. thank you mary any other questions of mary what do we need to do to get this through missouri and anything just nothing Not it's nothing. this was more of an uh, informational right. thing that mary right. wanted I, to in case somebody sure. mentioned it i just wanted yeah. to make sure you guys realized we weren't doing it in-house at this point so thank you all right thanks mary we do need a motion to send her debt management policy on i'll make a motion second, second. Okay, we have a motion by Patkey, seconded by Pettit, to send this item on to council. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? By your vote, you sent it on. Thank you. Parks and Recreation, Baseball, Softball, Athletic Fees, and Charges. Wayne? Good evening. Um, I'm here to talk about fee recommendations uh, for baseball, softball. Um, I guess we'll talk about it here and then Darren wanted me to take it to council tonight. So uh, we're looking at amending the fees and charges uh, for baseball, softball. Um, so I guess the way this all came about was um, some of the local organizations in town, because uh, the Wash Washington Youth um, Sports Ass. At That's the old Babe Ruth. Huh? Washington Youth Sports Association is right. Yes. Association. That's they, the old Babe Ruth. That that's okay. Yeah, they lost their um, guy that did the fields for them, all the uh, prep work for them. And so they came to the city and were asking mm -hmm. questions about how they could get the fields done, drug and stuff like that. And so I guess last fall, um, the old director was given the task of revising the fees and looking at the fees. And so a subcommittee was formed. And they've been meeting over the fall and winter 
and um, you'll see the fees that were um, have been recommended um, per that subcommittee. And so in the ordinance right now, um, it's listed as athletic fees, and then Ronzik Field had its own fees, and the athletic field fees were listed, had several different fees, and then if you were a Missouri nonprofit, had a different fee for that. And so what we're trying to do here is kind of consolidate all our fees and get them to a more manageable thing and get all the fees or all the fields under the same fees and be consistent on our charges. Um, so you'll see $20 uh, res reservation fee for games and then a $20 reservation fee for practices. That's only at Ronzek for practices. Then a $30 field light fee uh, per game. So it's been determined that the electric for a game, you know, game is equal to about two hours. Uh, electric's $15 an hour, so $30 for a game if you have it for lights. If you use lights, and then a $40 night game fee, and so that's how we came up with 40 is $10 reservation fee and then $30 for the lights. And then this new fee, the $50 prep fee per day, which includes dragging, uh, setting the bases, and lining the field. Um, that would be new, and that would um, take in what uh, the Youth Sports Association kind of came to us for. Um, and so the max range would be no more than $100 per day, and then um, a $50 deposit. So the, the organizations that uh, use our field every year, Legion, uh, Washington Youth Sports, and uh, Washington High School, they would be charged a 50% uh, deposit based on the previous year's uh, invoice. And then um, the rates would be adjusted uh, per the consumer price index uh, each year so they could go up a little bit each year. Um, and so we're just looking to amend what would be in the ordinance, and uh, I believe you have the page, kind of created this graph, kind of lays it all out there, and then would be inserted into the ordinance. Without looking, do we, do we drag the field for Runzik only and the rest of it done by the league? We drug Ronzik only, and then the rest were done by the league. Correct. We used them. The, the Washington Youth Sports Association, they had their own separate contract to go ahead and have those fields prepared for those. Not going to do that anymore. Yeah. They are not going to do that anymore. The individual that was doing that, uh, I think they had a what I would call a sweetheart deal, <laughs> based on the price. Because even when we started looking at what we would uh, have to go ahead and charge, I mean, this is not just so you know, this does not cover those you know the costs associated with us doing this no matter what it, no matter how we looked at it uh on the committee the city is there to go ahead and subsidize portion of those you know those fees these fees do not cover everything by no means but we needed to go ahead and collect something with regards to if we we're going to go ahead and start prepping the fields and so that's where we came into it and uh so with this this is this charge the only other thing i would add to wayne's presentation is the fact that we did not distinguish between Rennick and the rest of the fields. We just said, we're gonna do all these fields at the same rate. And um, here's the, and the, uh, the rates for uh, the reservation and the lights and all that stuff. They're all under the same dollar amount for ease of, you know, it's just easier to go ahead and do it that way. Um, and so we are gonna to have to look at, Wayne is gonna be getting me some numbers pretty soon with regards to costs associated. We're gonna to have to go ahead and, and look at hiring somebody to go ahead and help us with doing this, this. is going to add to everyday activities you bet yeah. you bet so we did not if you'll remember in last year's budget we did not include a, a full-time um, parks employee and so now we can take a look at possibly doing that but part of the justification for that at that time was we were also uh, going to do away with big driver which was a substantial portion of maintenance that we had one person devoted towards so and I just might add that the, uh, the range where it says $100 per day, that's per field. And basically that comes from if the U Sports wants to have four games that day, we're only going to drag it in line at once. They would be responsible for anything they do in between the games. And therefore, if they play four games that day, whether it be under lights, it's still a $30 charge. But if not, they're not getting charged for every single game that day. It's a maximum. It's a maximum yeah. amount is all there. Mm -hmm. um, and then also... It, this is really not an increase to either one of the organs, the Legion or the Little League. Um, minimal. I mean, minimal increase at that. Um, and, and with that, part of our discussion was, you know, they still give back 
to the city, whether it be help pay for a backstop here and there, improvements at Ronzik Field, the Legion does a lot out there, those kind of things that we want to keep that relationship, not charge them for everything, but yet charge them a reasonable price and then also accept help back as park approved, you know, improvements. So that's, uh, I thought that was a big thing for me that we still keep that relationship and they still want to come back and help the park system and keep the fields nice. Yeah, and we met with all three, the heads of all three organizations. And right. they, They're all agreeing to on, on yes. board too. So. The, uh, this is just going to be your first wave <laughs> yeah. of fees. We are going to be looking at others. This was just the first ones. We wanted to have this in place a couple of months ago, actually, but I think uh, both leagues understood where we were at, and uh, we kind of came to terms about a month ago with this stuff. It's just taking this time to get it back to you. But uh, we intend on looking at the soccer fields, uh, probably next also just and then just going through the list of all the stuff that we can go ahead and um, um, reserve or our, our citizens can go ahead and reserve if they if they choose to, to, to do that yeah it'll probably be soccer and football next yeah and we've been gathering information on that Wayne how will you do the deposits for the first year since you don't have a prior years we'll just use last year's so some of the organizations have already asked about that I think, um, and, and Chris, if you know that number in the back, Chris is here with WISA. Um, I think, wasn't yours about 52, 5,300 last year total? For the lights? Yeah. Yeah. Are your total fees that you paid last year? And the benefit of that is that they reserve those days when they want games. And then, like we discussed too, the Parks Department has that option if someone wants to come and rent four Lakeview fields on a weekend, we can do that. Where in the past, it was kind of like the unspoken rule that the Little League just had the fields every single day. And okay. this way, with a deposit and a schedule, we'll have a little bit more information there to go off of. So hopefully. plan for rain dates then too, if that, you know, if it makes those dates available otherwise, but then you've got another rainy season. Are those rain dates built in? Well, it's not that it's set in stone what days are going to get, but as a rain date comes, the Little League's just going to work with the Parks Department and yeah, say, we'll have to, we have to these reschedule days. these days. We'll reschedule, reschedule those. As they yeah. pop up. Anything else? Anything else? Any other questions or comments? Thanks, Wayne. This ordinance okay. will be in your packet later. So. so we need to make a motion to send this on to Council? I'll make a motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion by... Patkey seconded by Scornia to send this on to council. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? By your vote, you sent it on. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Wayne. Street use of state bid for purchase of a tandem dump truck. Hey, Tony. Good evening. This is a budgeted uh, dump truck we had in our, in our uh, budget for this year. We are replacing a 1987 model uh, Chevy that has 205,000 miles on it failed a safety inspection in 2017 and has been stricken to the landfill ever since. <laughs> well, we don't really feel safe taking it on the road, so. That's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions or comments? Make a motion, send it on to council. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Holtmeyer, seconded by Pettit, to send this item on to council. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? By your vote, you've sent it on. Thank you. And just an FYI, we are also going to be grinding up our mulch out at the, uh, at the recycle center this week. We were tentatively going to start today, but with the cold temperatures, the contractor said his machine doesn't, doesn't work too well when it's this cold. So we're going to start on Wednesday on that. Is it a normal and, size pile? I'm sorry? Is that a normal size pile, or is it smaller? That's about average. Yeah. We, we can always tell we start running out of room to, to dump the trucks. About 24 grand? Yep. Yep. And all the bids, we had three bids, they're all pretty similar 24, 24, 25. So it came in pretty close. And we also have our two uh, old street sweepers up on Purple Wave if anybody's interested in a street sweeper. <laughs> I don't want a street sweeper. Right. Come on, Joe. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Use it for snow, snow removal. That would work. Snow removal. <laughs> water, wastewater, freight liner, sewer truck purchase. 
Good evening. Uh, Kevin was unable to make it. He um, he has the flu, and I didn't think we wanted that, so he's at home. But um, <clears throat> so this is the uh, the sewer truck purchase that he briefed you on at the last admin ops meeting. Um, it is a pretty substantial purchase for the water wastewater department. Uh, Kevin did provide a cover letter <coughs> that outlines kind of the uses that we um, that we use it for. It is used across multiple departments. Um, street department uses it for hydro excavating. I, I use it for locating uh, different underground utilities. We do street work, things of that nature. Currently, we do not have a truck. Um, it has a uh, pretty substantial oil leak in it. It's, it's unusable. Um, so we've been operating with that one for approximately one month now. Um, any use that we've had for a, a vac truck, we've had to con you know, contract out with either septic services or some other source. Um, so at the last meeting, I think he briefed you that the approximate um, value or the cost to purchase the truck was around $450,000. Um, he was able to work with a supplier in Illinois um, and we found a, um, a demo. Um, it, it's got a certain amount of hours. I know Chad and, and a carrier here to speak on those details, uh, but it's a demo truck that they utilize to go to different municipalities and just test out. Um, I wouldn't anticipate that it would be, you know, too rough, you know, you know, for the one year it is a 2018 truck. It does have all the warranties that a new truck would have. Uh, the other beautiful thing is it is sitting on the lot ready to be delivered as soon as the check is delivered to them. Um, with the other purchase, purchasing a new one, um, the truck was out to past July. So we would have to figure something out until then. It does have a savings of approximately seventy thousand um, so dollars. So seventy thousand dollars. Yep, three hundred and uh, yeah, three hundred and fifty some odd dollars. Now, how do they regulate the the, the regulate by hours <clears throat> on that truck? Yeah, there's well, it's miles obviously as well, but there is an hour meter on two. So I don't know how many this one has on it, as far as the pump itself. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of times, I mean, like, we demoed three of them, I think, or two or three of them. And, I mean, a lot of times, the truck's running, and we're just, everybody's standing around talking about the truck, the different different ways to do it. So the hour meter would go up, but it's, it, I mean, I would consider it a... a, a Was a, it the same a, one that you had on Lafayette here? Yeah, another the big thing that we were looking at, too, this truck does, it's more... Um, it's less electronics to it, so it's more um, mechanical, which is helpful because our guys can work on things, different that's valves, things of that down. nature. So that's that's pretty important with uh, everything going to technology, you know, technology and things, especially on a truck that we have to use every single day. So we are asking um, you all tonight at the council meeting to approve this purchase. It was budgeted for next year, or you know, was going to be requested to be budgeted for next year. We are pulling it up. <coughs> And then funding that out of multiple sources because it does have a stormwater use um, and some other things. So, John, let's go ahead, Joe. Uh, can you inform the public a little bit more how crucial this <clears throat> truck is? For to, sure. To getting, you know, when we get close to a, a gas line or something like that, that this truck will actually suck up the soil around it to yeah. expose. Yeah, the number one use of the truck is to maintain our lift stations, um, which we have various lift stations, which that physically um, take wastewater and lift it up into a force main to get it in our gravity system. So those have to be periodically maintained. Um, previously, I believe, and Carrie could testify, they used, we used to actually send guys down there with essentially ladders and buckets uh, to clean those things out in a manhole. Um, now we can actually work that from the surface um, because it is essentially a, a giant vacuum cleaner. Um, so we can work everything from the surface much safer, much more efficient um, for our people. We can get things done pretty quickly. Um, that would be from the wastewater side. That is the number one priority of this truck. There, there's no, um, would never water that down, but that is the number one priority. The secondary uses you get is, like I said, hydro excavating, which essentially is that if you have utilities, um, gas lines, you know, unknown water lines, things of that nature. You don't have to get a backhoe in there and essentially dig up a large pit to get to something. You can actually suck soil up to try to expose that line and see what's down there. Um, a lot of our areas, especially in the downtown, are old. Um, there are very limited maps. It's hard for us to know where things are at. So we can use that from, you know, setting uh, uh, gates, you know, fence posts, essentially, in a lot of, you know, a lot of areas of those utilities. One comes to mind, um, down here at Lafayette, there was a transformer that was put in, and the requirement was to put a fence around it. Well, there was a bunch of utilities around there, so we were able to actually move this 
the little previous truck, over and suck that hole out to pour the concrete at the set the posts rather than have to fish around a bunch of utilities. It was much safer. Um, another use we had in the fire department kind of came to realize we had a, um, a um, agriculture truck tip over um, at Vosbrink Drive a couple months ago, um, and that truck was full of sewage um, from a uh, hog operation, and we were able to suck that truck out uh, to try to limit a you know a potential environmental s situation. So um, it has multiple uses. I mean, anything you can think of, a giant vacuum cleaner would do. We use it for our storm sewer cleanouts. Um, you know, cleaning out different storm sewers. So does that answer? Yep. Mm -hmm. By the look on the uh, fire chief Frankenberg's face when you said bucket and ladder, I think we need a fire truck with bucket and ladder. He looked like he that's what he wanted to go back to. <laughs> we would. I, I would say our workman's comp people would tell us that this is a very poor decision to send guys down yeah. the manhole again. But hey, that's not my world. So. <laughs> oh yes, it is. Oh, well, it is. <laughs> Second, yeah, yeah, in the background. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we'll entertain a motion to move this on to council. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion by Pettit, seconded by Waterman to move this item on to council. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? By your vote, you've moved it on. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, John. Did Give you have anything update. else? Airport, we're up and running. Uh, the city is operating the airport as of last Friday, March 1st. Um, um, I've not heard anything negative, so we'll continue forward. Okay. Um, we do have a board meeting tomorrow with um, a couple of councilmen here, liaisons, uh, to discuss operations, how we want to move forward, and any improvements or, you know, things that we can do better. We definitely are all ears. So. And we will have a lease available at your next council meeting for the climate controlled area behind the terminal. <clears throat> and I also hope to have Kevin Hellman, the airport manager, at the next meeting as well, just to introduce him to everybody. So sorry I didn't get that done today. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, John. Library budget amendment election expense. <clears throat> All right. Ooh, hello. Um, I'm asking for approval for a budget amendment. Um, Monday last week, the Board of Trustees voted to move $8,147.89 from our development fund into a special election account um, so that we could pay for the election fees that are due on March 12th. And so we just need approval for the budget amendment to be made. We did not um, know at the time that we made the budget that this right. is the direction we were going. So this is something that we decided after the fact. And so the money, the funds have already been approved to be moved um, by the trustees. We just need your approval. Any questions or comments? And this is just the cost. What you're seeing here is just the direct cost to put, place it on a ballot in April. Make a motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Solentrope, seconded by Pettit, to move this item on to council. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? By your vote, you sent it on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Administration agreements with Washington, Missouri Tourism Commission and Washington Area Chamber of Commerce. This is the uh, the third uh, agreement that we came to terms with with the uh, the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, this one had some minimal changes to it. Um, it the way this works is the um, the Tourism Commission we the the city uh, contracts with the Tourism Commission and then in turn the Tourism Commission. Uh, has an agreement with the Washington Area Chamber of Commerce to go ahead and provide tourism duties for us, and that's where their office uh, is funded out of. The bed tax has been um, steadily increasing over the years, and so uh, one of the questions that was raised recently in the past, 95% uh, of those funds that the, um, uh, the city would receive, well, 100% of that we would pass on to the Tourism Commission, then the Tourism Commission would pass on uh, Ninety-five percent of those funds for tourism-related activities down at the chamber, and that includes staffing, uh, whatever events that they choose, whatever their annual budget uh, that they needed it for. Um, they have since uh, asked this time for an increase to go uh, it, to receive ninety-seven and a half percent, and then the uh, tourism commission would retain that other amount. I will tell you over this past year, uh, as far as dollar amounts. 
the Tourism Commission then would keep under this uh, two and a half percent, they would retain approximately $4,500. And so, but they've been sitting on uh, some additional funds, but those funds have been used. Uh, sometimes um, they've been targeted towards uh, big purchases in the future. For example, uh, one of them that we did probably last year was we spent some money on the hotel feasibility study. There was about a $6,000 price tag for that. The Tourism Commission approved those funds. Uh, we've also had cases where people have come up to the Tourism Commission and asked for um, um, a uh, convention or something, you know, along those lines that, that they wanted some assistance with because it was bringing tourists into our community or it was good for our tourism. Um, and so they would give $1,000 here, $2,500 here, depending upon what the activity was. Um, they will still have that ability. They'll still have that account to go ahead and have that. It's just with this bed tax going, um, you know, with them receiving more with that, the tourism would like more of those funds to go ahead and be utilized in their annual operations. So that's the only difference. And the, the, besides the fact, just like all of the previous two agreements that we had with regards to the fair operating agreement and the community and economic development director position, um, all of those are on a three year cycle basically, so that we can go back and revisit those three years from now. You need a motion to add a two and a half percent? You just need to vote, I think, as it is. If, if We just need a motion as it is to go ahead and move it on to council. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Solentrub, seconded by Pettit to move this item <coughs> on to council. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by your vote, you moved it on, thank you. Um, since we've got a few minutes left, uh, I was reminded by our emergency management director this morning that the uh, code red uh, will be at, uh, there'll be a tornado exercise tomorrow at 10 a.m. So expect that for all of you that are signed up for code red. Um, and then we, looks like we have a few minutes if any of you have any specific questions of department heads. Look at that sea of faces that wish to answer any questions that you may have. Wayne. I know you've only been here eight weeks, but uh, how is the demo coming in at the, uh, the park? In the park in the shop? Old, in the old offices up front? Yeah, it's been slow, but steady. Um, they've reworked, uh, trying to rework the countertop and uh, convert the old parks director's office. Uh, they moved the door around, things like that. Um, but it has been slow. A lot of the guys, you know, here lately, well, most of the time I've been here, I get called into snowplow duty and things like that, and then, then they have their normal daily tasks too. But I know Bruce and Carl were down there, well, not last week, but the week before, because I was out of town last week, uh, working on the floors. Um, and, you know, they've been doing small things as time allows, but they've been doing their normal tasks and then uh, the other things that pop up, like weather. Snow? Snow. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a lot of that. Yes. A lot of that. Okay. Yeah, we're done. Thank you. Winter is officially over. <laughs> Any other questions? I agree. Oh, Mark? Good evening, Good Council. Uh, and one other uh, item uh, left over from last month uh, was brought up about the old Sporlin plant number one. Thank you. Uh, did have some communica uh, communication with the EPA. And uh, I'm encouraged uh, their uh, community relations person uh, I was talking to uh, felt very positive that uh, it would be in the national priorities listing come April. As th there's not a set date or anything uh, that they do the national priorities list, but it's generally done about April or May, he said. So, and he, uh, based on the feedback, I, I feel good about it actually making the list. So we think we're going forward there. Good. So thank you. How would they go? How would they go about cleaning that up? Do you have any idea yet? Well, unfortunately, that's that's a baby step in a long process. Uh, you would think that uh, gets on the list. Okay, let's start cleaning it up. Oh, contraire. Uh, it, that's the the first step. Then would be uh, determining the correct cleanup method. So they determine. You know, is it extract the groundwater? Is it remove soil? 
you know, they, they do analysis. So getting on the list is just the first step towards the cleanup. Okay. Anyone else with questions or comments? Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mark. Anyone else have something to share with us? Tony. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Yes. I thought we weren't going to use cinders this year. How are we working? I thought we weren't going to use cinders. Well, we, uh, we are getting down to our probably below a thousand ton of salt in our salt dome, if not less. And if you ever looked at our salt dome, there is probably 800 tons of cinders mixed mm -hmm. into the salt. In the bottom. All the way down one side. So inevitably, as we start to use up all of our salt, we are getting some cinders. A lot of times if we get into an ice situation, we've been mixing them, using them on the hills. Uh, we, have, we have seen them in town also, so unfortunately, they're just getting mixed in, especially as we're getting, getting low on our salt supply. So. Okay. But we have a brand new sweeper, so we'll take care of them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Do you use much sand anymore? No. The winter will end one of these days. I'm sorry? Winter will end one of these days. <laughs> Saturday? No, not Saturday. Yeah. We'll see. We'll keep our fingers crossed. That's right. Thanks, Tony. Anyone have a burning desire to tell us something? I'm just waiting for Steve to yell the next one. Yeah. yeah, who do you want next, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jeez. <laughs> duck now. They're all we ducking can. back there. <laughs> like at high school. With the teacher calls. Here comes one. Shauna. She got a Hi. joke. Brave, brave new. I've spoken in a while, so I, I just wanted to remind you all that we are, winter will be over before we know it, and we will need summer help. So we have put out our ad for summer employment, so just to get that out there, we will be looking again for pool cashiers, camp counselors, uh, maintenance workers in our parks department, as well as our street department. So we have put that ad out and started advertising on our Facebook page. We are reaching out to local schools, trying to see if we can maybe get in some of their newsletters before the end of the year. East Central College, um, it's a great opportunity for a college student who may want to work for the summer. Uh, great opportunities there. If you like to go to the pool, you can be a camp counselor and take your kids to the pool. So you can utilize that pool for 2019. And uh, we are putting that out there. We, will, we hope to do another job fair our schedules have kind of changed around a little bit with the use of the chambers, but we are looking to do a, a job fair that would allow students that maybe this is their first job and they could use extra help having someone come in with them, meet, meet us here, fill out the job application, make sure they have everything, uh, doing, doing it after school so they could bring someone in with them, help them get that application. That gives us the opportunity also to do a kind of a face-to-face -face interview real quick. Um, last year we had our park staff and our street staff with us to kind of do initial interviews, talk about the job, gives the potential applicant an opportunity to say what does a pool cashier do um, and learn a little bit more about the job before they make that decision. But I feel like it's a great opportunity, uh, especially for summer, you know, if you just want a job for the summer and come home from college work and then go back. So we do have some folks that do, re do return, but um, as with many summer jobs, you only are in school for so long and then you move on. So we've lost a couple. We are also looking for our parks department uh, summer assistant for the office. So someone that can be here while our other parks department employees may need to be out at the parks or working with camp counselors. So that's a position that is, um, has been filled before we've had a returning uh, employee that's come back, but that is open again. So we do have all those positions open and are looking forward to our summer season starting at the end of May. Thank have we you. been getting a lot of applicants for the openings we have? For, um, so yes, we had. Uh, we, we are kind of closing back down. We are still looking for our landfill operator maintenance worker one and then our operator maintenance worker three. Uh, those we put back out. Uh, we didn't get the response that we thought we would. Mm -hmm. So that one we've put back out just to see if maybe there's some folks that didn't see it last time or maybe uh, as the season has kind of gotten slower, maybe that they, they need a job now that they didn't need three or four weeks ago. And then our infrastructure designer, that one's about wrapped up. So we are actually in the interview process for that position this week. And that uh, was the position that was a GIS technician. We've revamped it a little bit, but we are still looking for similar a similar position. So that's an interview process this week. 
and we'll hope to fill that. We do still have an opening as a dispatcher. We're still looking for the right candidate there as well. Uh, testing, Wednesday. testing Wednesday. There we go. There's your update. <laughs> So, and then we filled all of our library positions. So we did, qu we got quite a bit of response uh, for our library clerks. I think that's a really popular position. So Claire had quite a stack of candidates for that one. And uh, we had a lot of people interested in that position, but we were able to fill both those yes. openings that we had. Um, we had two employees that since December yes, decided that they mention. wanted to move on. You can, you can, you can go ahead and do that. Yep. I got one thing up for hers. Uh, one other one other position is like I said we may be looking then at a maintenance worker one position for the parks um, full time based upon what we were talking about earlier about getting the fields prepped etc and picking up some of those other duties so and we're seeing more use of our uh, online PDF so that people don't have to come in and we are still working with the new website mm -hmm. the next phase after we kind of get everything settled will be to have that online application option as well where people can actually fill the PDF online and submit it via email or submit it through a, a system but that's down the road a little bit with our new system right now we're still accepting them uh, people are coming in picking them up and dropping them back off mailing them in I've had a few that have emailed them back so but we will continue to work on getting that updated as well right. thanks good to see you thanks, Shana. thank you Shauna I might also add that for the next two weeks, we have two uh, students from Marbach here. Um, and uh, they're from uh, the high school, and they're interning uh, with us for two weeks. So there's three, um, three young men here from Marbach, uh, and two of them are interning with the city. So uh, one is shadowing Sal, and the other one is shadowing John. Um, so if you see them out and about, we're going to try to give them a real good exposure of, uh, of the city of Washington and um, kind of move them around a little bit. And so. And we thought Sal and John were the best? <laughs> yeah, one was looking okay. for engineering. I didn't disagree, I just asked. Well, uh, yeah, for what Sometimes we were looking it's good for. Disciplinary. Okay. <laughs> right. So, anyway. <laughs> Considering what the fields they're going into, uh, I would say they were the choices. So anyway, uh, so they'll be here with us eight to five most every day, and um, they showed up this morning, and they're they're really great. They didn't so, fall asleep during the department head meeting. Come back tomorrow. Yeah, right. Yeah, That's yeah. always a key. Yeah. So I expect they will be. I think they had good days today. Yeah, they did. They had really good days. I expect them to be back tomorrow. So anyway. Uh, half shaggers and Marbach. No, they were, they're good, good kids. So anyway, no. Nice. So if you see them walking around, whatever, they were great today. They were excited when we were talking in our department head meeting about Wi-Fi. And afterwards, uh, Jonas came over and said, I just cannot believe this, that you would have free hotspots in your town. We have to pay for everything. You get free hotspots, free. Wow. <laughs> he was going on and on about it. I just have to tell them at home that we could do free ones. So, <laughs> so, they, were, so they were listening, which I thought was pretty interesting. Oh, so anyway. Amen. Oh. Amen. Any other council comments? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Patkey, seconded by Holtmeyer to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned.